What's up guys, BC Amplified. When you think of professional wrestling, you think of the victories, the triumphs, the superstars holding the championships high above their head. But there's another side of the pro wrestling industry that is all too real, and that is the tragic side. So many tragedies, unfortunately, not enough answers as to why they happened. In this video, I am going to personally go over my five biggest WWE superstar tragedies that hit me harder than most. And I realize everybody's list would be different because unfortunately, there's so many tragedies that have occurred in the pro wrestling world. From Bruiser Brody to the Von Erichs to Roddy Piper and more. But these are my personal five that again hit me harder than any others. I want to start out with number five. This is an individual that lived an ultimate career and an ultimate life. Known for his thunderous entrance music, amplified personality, and larger than life character, Jim Helwig, the ultimate warrior, became one of the WWE's biggest stars in the history of the company. Yet despite the Warriors' immense success that included two IC title reigns and a run with the WWE Heavyweight Championship, Jim Helwig and Vince McMahon could never see eye to eye when it came to business. In the summer of 1991, Warriors sent a letter to Vince McMahon, informing McMahon that he would not be showing up to that year's SummerSlam event as promoted, unless McMahon paid him an additional $550,000, limited his work schedule, provided travel accommodations, and ensured him that no other wrestler on the roster would be paid more than he at future pay-per-views. McMahon agreed only to ensure that Jim Helwig showed up to SummerSlam as promoted to the fans. The moment SummerSlam went off the air, Warrior was suspended and ultimately fired from WWE. Jim returned to WWE eight months later at WrestleMania 8, and because the WWE was starting to crack down on steroids, came back noticeably different and much smaller. Warrior would eventually go back on steroids, which would ultimately lead to his release for a second time from WWE in late 1992. In 1993, Helwig would legally change his name to Warrior to capitalize on all aspects of the Warrior character. At WrestleMania 12 in 1996, Jim Helwig yet again returned to WWE, defeating Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Warrior returned with a plethora of demands, and it didn't take long before Vince McMahon would once again terminate Warrior's contract. From 1996 through 1998, WWE and Warrior would be engaged in many lawsuits, stemming from merchandise royalties and copyright violations. It would be another 17 years before the Warrior was welcomed back to WWE, thanks to Triple H, the same man Warrior defeated 17 years earlier at WrestleMania 12. This time, Warrior wasn't coming back to wrestle. He was returning home to take his rightful place into the WWE Hall of Fame. Warrior was able to reconcile with McMahon and enjoy the entire WrestleMania 30 weekend with his family, wife Dana and two daughters, Indy and Madigan. From his Hall of Fame induction on Saturday, April 5, 2014, to appearing in front of the live crowd at WrestleMania 30 the very next night. The Warrior was in great spirits. Before wrapping up the weekend's festivities, Warrior agreed to make one last appearance the following night on Monday Night Raw before returning home. Despite many performers describing Warrior as looking frail, sweating profusely, and breathing heavily throughout the weekend, Warrior showed up on Raw dropped a great warrior-esque promo, shook the ropes, and raged off to his thunderous theme music. It would be the last time any of us would see the warrior ever again. The very next evening, while leaving his hotel, warrior collapsed. He was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead at the age of 54 from an apparent heart attack. You know, The Ultimate Warrior is one of those stories that I just can't wrap my head around because on the one hand, he got his Hall of Fame moment, his Hall of Fame induction. He got the respect 
from not just the fans, but from Vince and from the company that I think deep down he was always kind of yearning for. I think he knew he offered so much to the business, but I never think, or I believe, he felt he never really got the respect from the company. So, not just to hear the fans respect him again and give the adulation and the props, but to have the company do such, that's huge. But, so he had that. He had that moment. He had the appearance at WrestleMania. He got to drop that promo on Monday Night Raw. You know, and, and all that is so cool to experience in his lifetime before he passes away. But then on the flip side, I look at it like, he, it's, it's the, one of the biggest weekends of his life. He's being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Everything he worked for, it all comes full circle. Hall of Fame. The next night, he gets to show up and appear in front of the live crowd at WrestleMania. The next night, he gets to drop a promo on Monday Night Raw and be the warrior of old. And then the very next night, he passes away. I mean, that is just a story that Hollywood writers wouldn't even write. I, I just, I can't fathom that. And that's why for me, uh, that's a tragedy. Because yes, it's good. He got to enter the Hall of Fame in his lifetime. He got to see and experience all of it. He got to reconcile with Vince and a lot of the superstars. But on that same weekend, basically... The Tuesday after, he drops dead. I, I, I mean, there's just something that doesn't sit well with me. He didn't get to enjoy that fully. He didn't get to take a step back and think about what had just happened. Usually, an event like that, it'll take me two or three weeks to really fathom what just went down. To relive all of the events from something that was so important to me. And I think Warrior would have needed another week, two, three weeks to really fathom what had just went down WrestleMania weekend. He never got the chance to do that. Everything was just bing, bang, boom, one after the other. Finally, Tuesday, he leaves his hotel room. He's about to go home. And he never makes it. He never really gets to think about what just happened. And on top of that, him and Vince McMahon, he presented to Vince McMahon a plethora of business opportunities and endeavors that he would like to do with WWE, and Vince was on board. None of that got to come to fruition uh, because his life ended in a tragic, sudden way. Um, yeah, there's no way that doesn't make BC's list for sure. And now I move on to um, stick with my numbers game here, stick with my math. This is number four on my five biggest WWE superstar tragedies. And this is the ninth wonder of the world. Andre the Giant, known as the eighth wonder of the world, would be proud of who was to follow behind in his footsteps. Billed as the ninth wonder of the world, Joni Lauer, known as China, took the professional wrestling world by storm from the moment she arrived to the WWF in 1997. As part of the Degeneration X stable, her look and demeanor was unlike any other female that came before her, and her strength was too scary to fathom. Not just for the women, but the male roster as well. It didn't take China long to rise to the top of the female division, capturing the then WWF Women's Championship, but it became evident very quickly that China could not be contained to the women's division alone. It wasn't long before China was taking on the male roster and beating established stars like Triple H, Kurt Angle, and Chris Jericho. China went on to become the first female ever to capture the Intercontinental Championship not once, but twice, and first female ever to become number one contender for the WWF Championship. Her accolades didn't stop there, as she would go on to become the first female ever to participate in both the Royal Rumble match and King of the Ring tournament. China accomplished all of these feats in just a four-year span and seemed destined to become one of professional wrestling's most legendary performers of all time. But it all came crashing down in 2001 when she was taken off of television for what at the time was being described as personal reasons. 
It would later be revealed that her real-life boyfriend, Paul Levesque, known as Triple H, was having an affair with Vince McMahon's daughter, Stephanie McMahon. China originally stated that the breakup and affair with Paul Levesque was not what made her leave WWE, and Jim Ross later went on record to say that both parties agreed to let her contract expire. However, in 2015, China revealed that after a meeting with Vince McMahon about the affair, China was sent home and later sent a fax informing her that she was no longer needed within the company. The WWE would not let Joni use the name China in future endeavors. So in 2007, Joni legally changed her name to China, a loophole created by the Ultimate Warrior to block future lawsuits from WWE. After short stints in Japan and TNA wrestling, China turned to the porn industry as a means of income. Depression and addiction would overtake China's life, and any hope of the WWE welcoming China back would be destroyed on April 20th, 2016, when China was found dead at her home in California. She was 46 years old. The cause of her death was later ruled as an overdose of alcohol, painkillers, anxiety drugs, and sleeping pills. Even after her death, the WWE refused to place China into their Hall of Fame. So China's story always hit me hard because this is somebody we really, truthfully, full, wholeheartedly wanted to see come back to WWE because it was a feel-good story when that was going to happen. And I say when, not if, because it was a foregone conclusion. She meant so much to the business, to that company. She has to come back at some point, sometime, right? Even as every year passed, you said, bygones will eventually be bygones. And when she does show up, she's going to get the respect that she deserves. Maybe she has one more run. Maybe she just shows up and says hello to everyone and lets everyone show their adulation and respect for her. But no matter what, she has to come back home because she deserves it. She deserved that moment to come back home. And unlike the Ultimate Warrior, who even though to me it's still a tragic story, at least the Warrior got to experience the Hall of Fame. Got to be inducted in his lifetime. Got to come home and reconcile with the people that he had differences from the past, like Vince McMahon and others. With China, she never had that opportunity. She never was rewarded the chance to come back home. She has never been entered into the Hall of Fame in her lifetime or after. To this very day, has not been entered into the Hall of Fame. So at least Warrior got the chance to come home. China passed away, never being able to reconcile with the people that she once had differences with. Never got to reconcile with Paul Levesque or Vince. That doesn't sit well with me, and that's, uh, that's even a bigger tragedy for me than Warrior. But moving on, number three on my list of the five biggest WWE superstar tragedies. This was a real-life Beauty and the Beast combo. Randy Poffo, better known as the Macho Man Randy Savage and his beautiful wife Elizabeth Hewlett, better known as Miss Elizabeth, became instant superstars the moment they stepped foot in the then WWF. A real-life Beauty and the Beast combination, as Randy Savage was amplified to no end, intense, full of passion, some would say over the top, and always on edge. As a polar opposite, Miss Elizabeth was shy beyond normalcy. They couldn't be any more different from one another, yet it just worked. They quickly became the WWF's first couple, and Miss Elizabeth frontiered a whole new outlook on how professional wrestling managers were perceived in the business. It wouldn't take long for Randy Savage to catapult to the top of the WWF, winning the Intercontinental Championship and the WWF Heavyweight Championship on numerous occasions. However, behind the scenes, Randy was described as overprotective and insanely jealous when it came to Miss Elizabeth. 
Fellow wrestlers described the atmosphere backstage as toxic when it came to Randy and Elizabeth. Many stories surfaced of Randy locking Elizabeth in their dressing room and not letting anyone talk to her. If she was caught talking to other talent on the roster without Randy's knowledge, Savage would go off on Miss Elizabeth. Many peers of Savage felt sorry for Elizabeth, but nobody wanted to confront Randy. On television, everything seemed to be going perfect, even using a Miss Elizabeth Macho Man breakup to further great storylines. But back in real life, the breakup was all too real, as Elizabeth and Randy divorced in 1992, and not much long after, Elizabeth was no longer seen in the WWF. Randy continued on, but eventually Vince McMahon wanted Randy to leave the ring and join the commentary team full-time, with the ultimate goal of letting the younger talent start taking the top spots on the card. Randy was not happy about this, and would frequently express his displeasure with McMahon. Vince refused to budge, however, and inevitably, this led to Randy Savage leaving the WWF and cutting a deal with rival WCW. Behind the scenes, this was said to have devastated Vince McMahon, as McMahon had always viewed Savage as a lifelong member of the WWF and someone he shared a close bond with. Despite rumors that Savage may have been involved with Stephanie McMahon romantically at some point in his career, there has never been any evidence or facts to back that up. Vince never forgave Randy Savage for leaving, and as a result, the Macho Man never returned to WWE. Fans were left hoping that at the very least, he would be inducted into the Hall of Fame one day. But as each year went by... That day never came. After years of depression, Miss Elizabeth turned to drugs and alcohol, and eventually it would catch up to her. On May 1, 2003, Elizabeth overdosed on painkillers and vodka. Despite attempts to resuscitate by her boyfriend, former wrestler Lex Luger, Miss Elizabeth was pronounced dead at the age of 42. Eight years later, on May 20, 2011, Randy Savage suffered a heart attack while driving with his wife. He lost control of his vehicle and crashed into a tree. He was pronounced dead at the age of 58. It would take another four years for Vince McMahon to finally pay the ultimate tribute to Randy by placing him into the 2015 Hall of Fame. We're all now waiting on the same respect to the original first lady of the WWF, Miss Elizabeth. Yeah, so Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth, this one hits me extremely hard too because just like Warrior, you know, these these two were such a big part of my childhood. When I say larger than life, that doesn't do it justice, guys. What they meant to 80s wrestling and 80s WWF, um, words cannot express. That's how big they were. That's how legendary. They were literally heroes to someone like me. And... In my fantasy world, I would like them not only to still be here with us, but together. Because for me, they always belong together. But obviously, Macho Man Randy Savage had a, had a lot of baggage and uh, was a big cause of them breaking up. And I think he did end up going on and getting remarried. And it looked like they were extremely happy. It looked like he was much older and wiser and wasn't making the same wrongs that he once made with Miss Elizabeth. So I'm glad Randy Savage learned, you know, how to have a healthy relationship, you know. But in my fantasy world, it would have still been with Miss Elizabeth. Um, at the very least, I would have them still here on Earth with us. Um, but life isn't always, you know, rainbows and roses, man. And, you know, tragedies occur and... With Miss Elizabeth, who was always the shy, nice, good one in the couple. She was the beauty. And, you know, you always thought she had a much more clearer head, no matter the situation. But the truth is, a human being can only take so much uh, depression and baggage and carry so much weight on their shoulders. And for Miss Elizabeth, she turned to excessive drinking and pills and eventually that caught up to her, and, and that's a tragedy of epic proportions when somebody that young in her early 40s passes away. And then years later, Randy Savage, while driving down the road with his wife, has a heart attack, goes off the road, and slams into a tree, and is pronounced dead. You know, you gotta remember, these are my heroes growing up, and man, to hear how the story ends, sometimes you don't want it, right? 
It's okay to read the beginning of the book, the middle of the book, but when you know it's not going to end well, it's almost like you don't want to end that, you know, you don't want to read that last chapter. Um, yeah, this is one of the biggest tragedies that I've ever um, came across in the pro wrestling business, especially WWF slash E. Moving on to number two on my five biggest WWE superstar tragedies. Uh, when you think the word tragedy, this is uh, this would be the exact definition. This is the last thing you ever wanted uh, to hear about. And unfortunately, on one night at a WWE pay-per-view, um, it happened. Professional wrestling fans knew Owen Hart as a great wrestler, a consummate professional, and a fun character to be entertained by. But his peers knew him as an incredible friend, husband, and father. Always one to make others laugh and forget about the heartache of being on the road and away from their families. As a member of the esteemed Hart family, it didn't come as a shock to any knowledgeable wrestling fan that Owen Hart was the real deal. One great match after another, Owen Hart cemented his legacy from the start, and in the process collected championships along the way. A former European champion, two-time intercontinental champion, four-time tag team champion, and former King of the Ring in 1994. It seemed Owen Hart's success had no ceiling, but it did. That ceiling abruptly and tragically came crashing down on May 23, 1999, at a WWF pay-per-view known as Over the Edge. Owen Hart was playing a newer character called the Blue Blazer, and had a big intercontinental title match against the Godfather that night. Part of the Blazers' character was a spoof of a superhero of sorts, so WWF's creative team thought that Owen should descend from the rafters in a superhero-esque arrival. Before being lowered to the ring, it is believed that Owen had accidentally triggered an early-release mechanism from his harness. This sent Owen Hart on an astounding... 78-foot fall into the ring, landing chest first on the top rope. Despite the fall, Vince McMahon declared that the show must go on, and it did. However, Owen Hart never regained consciousness and was pronounced dead from internal bleeding at the age of 34. Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler broke the news to the wrestling world live on air during the Over the Edge pay-per-view event. The event was immediately blacklisted and never released on home video or commercially on any format for the next 15 years. In 2014, the WWE Network aired the event for the first time. On November 2, 2000, the WWE paid Martha Hart, the wife of Owen, $18 million in a lawsuit settlement. Martha would sue the WWE once again 10 years later in 2010 due to royalties and copyright issues stemming from the WWE mentioning and using Owen in their programming. WWE once again settled and Martha received several million dollars more from WWE. It is said that Martha Hart had become obsessed with protecting Owen Hart's image and refused to let Vince McMahon put Owen Hart into the Hall of Fame. Wrestlers would speak out, including Mark Henry, who has publicly pleaded for Martha to change her mind and let Owen be inducted. Bret Hart has publicly stated that he feels Vince McMahon should no longer adhere to Martha's wishes and put Owen in where he belongs. Twenty years later, and Owen Hart is still not in the WWE Hall of Fame. So with Owen Hart, that's a hole in not just the WWE, but the entire professional wrestling industry that'll never be filled. It is a void that cannot be filled. Because not just the WWE fans or wrestling fans, but the boys and the gals in the back, in the locker room, Owen Hart meant so much to them, to everybody in the wrestling community. It's one thing to look at Warrior and Macho Man, and a lot of people would say, Yes, but what contributed to their death was lots of caffeine, always being amplified, steroids, or pills. And you'd most likely be correct on all of them for both of those individuals and many more. But with Owen Hart, it hits exceptionally hard because this was a pure, sudden accident in every sense of the word. That's what makes this such a sudden tragedy 
of epic proportions. Is as if just one thing was done differently. If one mistake wasn't made. Or if Owen Hart waited four seconds later, you know, you start asking yourself all these questions and you start what ifing. And that's what'll drive a person insane. All the what ifs, all the questions, all the what could we have done differently. At least with Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior, they lived a lifestyle, they knew how they were living, and they knew what could one day be a consequence. With Owen, He's playing a character. He's doing what the writers are telling him to do. Um, he's performing this stunt that many say he's not fully comfortable with. But he's going to do it because he's a company man. And then all of a sudden this tragic accident happens. And Owen Hart is taken from us. Uh, not much more you can say about that, man. That's why that is so high on my list of tragedies. Because that's the, the definition for me of a tragedy. However... There is one tragedy in pro wrestling that totally eclipses anything and everything before it. And there's no words for this because I can't even find the words for it, so we'll just tell the story. This is the number one biggest WWE superstar tragedy for me of all time. When it came to Chris Benoit, one word came to mind during his career. Champion. In the WWE alone, Benoit had done it all. Four-time tag team champion. Four-time intercontinental champion. A three-time United States champion. And a former heavyweight champion. Not to mention the 2004 Royal Rumble winner. When Benoit showed up in the WWE in 2000 with Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Perry Saturn, a group known as the Radicals, we all knew Benoit was going to be a breakout star. And he didn't disappoint, quickly becoming a fan favorite and a true locker room leader. Benoit was someone that the entire roster could look up to and depend on. But some say that after the day of November 13th, 2005, Benoit was never the same again. That is the day one of his closest friends and former Radicals member, Eddie Guerrero, was found dead in his hotel room from heart failure. He was 38 years old. Benoit was said to have never gotten over the loss of Guerrero and that his downward spiral was just beginning. Over the next several years, Benoit would continue using steroids despite his severe depression and WWE would keep him on the road. On June 19, 2007, Benoit would wrestle his final match against Elijah Burke. He would miss that weekend's house shows informing WWE officials that his wife and son had food poisoning and needed to be with them. It was only when he failed to show up to that weekend's pay-per-view that WWE became increasingly concerned. Benoit was slated for a title match for the vacated ECW championship with CM Punk. It wasn't like Benoit to miss this many shows, especially a pay-per-view event, and hardly any contact between he and the company. WWE notified the police of their concerns and officers were dispatched to Chris Benoit's home in Fayetteville, Georgia on June 25, 2007. Police entered Benoit's home and discovered three bodies. Chris Benoit, wife Nancy Benoit, and seven-year-old son Daniel Benoit. After the investigation was concluded, it was determined that Chris Benoit had murdered his own wife and son and then killed himself. His wife was tied up beforehand, and his son drugged with Xanax and likely unconscious before being strangled. Benoit then hung himself on his own lap pull-down machine. The murder-suicide took place over a three-day period, which coincides with the weekend's dates that Benoit had missed with the WWE, for what he claimed was food poisoning. The double murder-suicide rocked the professional wrestling world to its core, and to this very day is a subject that the WWE refuses to mention, both on-air and off. Chris Benoit's entire career erased in one weekend. After several tests were performed on Chris Benoit's brain, it was determined that Benoit had an advanced form of dementia, and that Benoit's brain was so severely damaged that it resembled the brain of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. 
again, there really is no words for this type of tragedy. Um, we are all left, even to this day and probably forever, wondering how, why, all these questions. And I don't know if we're ever really going to have the answers. Research will always show that his brain uh, was beyond repair. Um, research will show you what concussions and depression uh, can do to a person. Research and science will, will tell us that Benoit was going through a lot of things and had a lot of issues. But at the end of the day, nobody can truly or will ever fathom how or why this could have transpired. And that is why that is the biggest tragedy uh, in pro wrestling history. Not just WWE. For me, anyway. And there's been a lot of them, as I said. I'm sure everybody's list would be differently. Um, listed differently. Other situations, events, and superstars would be on that list. Um, but for me, those are the five biggest WWE superstar tragedies. Uh, that really hit me in a different way. And um, some of them we'll never have the answers to. Some of them we know why, but it doesn't make it any better. And at the end of the day, these are the performers that we look up to. They entertain us on a weekly, sometimes daily schedule. And we want nothing but the best for them. And when tragedy hits, uh, it's almost like taking a piece out of us. Thank you guys for joining me for this uh, special special type of video um, that I wanted to put out there for you guys. And maybe in the future we'll do more top fives or even top tens of different scenarios, situations, topics. Much love and respect. Till next time, I'm BC Amplified. Check you.